G'day guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, and I'm Dan. So here's a um, short video basically of the items that I used. I'll leave them in the description as well so you can see exactly what I end up using. Today I'm going to be doing a drawing for the Inktober challenge and it's going to be prompt 5 which is long. So I decided to do Pinocchio because of his long nose and everything like that. I also wanted to portray the, the word long in the style that I did of the drawing. Originally, I was going to do a Tim Burton style drawing. That's that's what was inspired me to do that. You know, the the Nightmare Before Christmas type stuff, which is much more longer in in the the body and everything like that. Even the face is a bit more drawn out, but in a very very nice uh, style that Tim Burton actually does. Unfortunately, as I was going through the sketching stage, it sort of took on its new persona it's new a different style again i was sort of was able to portray the longness and the, the the form of the body and everything like that and then the nose i was able to put that into perspective but unfortunately i i don't think i nailed what exactly what i originally wanted to do for this particular prompt um granted i only just thought of it that day and thought i'd go straight to sketch and, and actually record the sketch this time so you guys could see the process from start to finish and it didn't quite get there, but but it still looked good. I mean, it still looked good. It's not something I usually regularly do, you know. I do admire the the style of Tim Burton, so I, I might actually do another one, which is more towards that sort of style of drawing. I, I'm trying. What I'm trying to do with my Inktober drawings is try and do something different each time. So it's not the same thing, you know. I'm not just doing outlines every single drawing, or I'm not just uh, doing ink washes every single drawing. I, I want to try different techniques as well as different styles. I probably shot myself in the foot by doing this actually, because everyone else sort of does a certain style and does that through consistently through the entire sketchbook. And they're able to do it each day because when you do a certain style and you become uh, confident and you master that certain technique, it becomes second nature to be able to do that and you're able to do it at a far quicker pace and you don't have to learn through the process of doing it i mean you, you should learn but once you've you've done it enough it, it, as an artist you, you can do it quicker and that's basically once you've once you've figured out all the the limitations to the medium or the style that you're trying to nail or the the form or the effect that's all that sort of stuff and once you do it and you do it over and over again it's it, it's like anything you will become better you'll become faster of it um and i you know, it's probably silly that I've done it this way. I thought maybe doing it every second day, I'd be able to get these out a lot quicker than I already am. But because I'm not doing my regular medium, my regular style, my regular anything, really, it's, it's taking longer than I thought. Because I'm also learning everything to do with YouTube. The audio, the picture quality, how my camera works, <laughs> um, the microphone settings, all those sort of things. Um, I'm not, not really knowledgeable when it comes to multimedia. It's something that I'm actually learning as I go fun but it's also very stressful because i you know i said to myself i'm gonna set this goal i'm gonna do it every second day and i'm not doing it i'm finding i'm having struggles doing it and i'm gonna be away for the next week and i didn't even plan for that i didn't know how i was going to to do it for the you know the few days that i'm away i'd like to do it but i want to do other things as well i want to have and i want to aim to try and do three videos that's my goal by the end of this month i, I want to try and find a workflow that works well for me that i can actually do two to three videos every week and, and have some sort of structure to this channel but i can't do that just yet i need to learn the, the workflow the applications that i'm using to edit all this and maybe not as a bigger learning curve if you came from a background with no understanding of adobe software and all that sort of stuff but i do i, I was previously a graphic artist and a web designer before moving my attention more towards illustration and and fine arts oh I kind of wished I went that path when I left school. Yeah, well, it happened. And I still learned a lot by doing graphic arts and web design um, knowledge. It's something that I can carry through with, you know, future things. And it makes it a lot easier to do work with the software that I'm working with at the moment. With it. Last video, I end up did a <laughs> silly Elmo voice. I d didn't know how to speak to a mic. Didn't know how to portray my personality or anything like that. Or even get my voice to sound right. It just sounded horrible. And, um... Yeah, so <laughs> the last few days I've been drawing as well as trying to learn how to do audio. So I'm not sure how this is going to end up sounding and trying to get my voice to sound correctly. It's somewhat better than what it was. And by no means am I an expert in ink. I have don't really use ink that much. I've mainly done digital work and 
traditional work in graphite. This is something not my, out of my norm. Um, I've used it, don't get me wrong, I used it when I was in studying art and things like that. I've learnt how to do dot stipples and cross hatching and all that sort of thing. And, um, it wasn't for me back then, and so I didn't really pursue it at that stage. I uh, probably wish I did because you know, as a, I'm enjoying it now at least. Um, and it does, it, it, the, whole, the whole idea of Inktober drawing in ink is where, yeah, you embrace the mistakes you do because you're, you're learning and you're learning how to to draw better you know precisely and and more efficiently too you know you got to get those strokes right you got to get those lines right you got to get everything to a certain degree right the first time because there's no you know edit undos with uh, ink um, you can't exactly hide the mistake either because it shows through your lines it shows you know your shakiness or if you <laughs> you didn't position your hand right when you were you were basically doing the line and all that sort of stuff. So it, it definitely what Jake Parker's Parker's done with creating his challenges is it, a good one, you know. Um, and there's nothing wrong with from what I'm, from what I'm reading anyway from the, the the actual guidelines of doing Inktober. There's nothing wrong with using pencil. And, um, oh, I kind of do. I, I'm not at that stage with ink, especially to be able to go right. I can draw these lines perfectly the first time around. Um, being a graphic, a, a graphite pencil artist doing portraits and things like, that, I can erase things if they don't look right. I can, I can slowly build up tonal areas, um, shadows and um, highlights and things like that. I can pull highlights out from the graphite from the to the paper. It's, it's a different medium. So you, you've got those ability to do that, um, to change how you want it to look as you go. Whereas ink, you don't. You don't. You kind of commit. You've got to commit to the line. You've got to be able to, to feel confident that that's the line you wanted to make in the first place, and you've got to go with it. You know, and uh, making that uh, making that process a little bit easier for seeing in your mind what they, that line would look like is by doing it a little graphite sketch beforehand. So you at least get somewhat of the proportions right, and you know, don't do one line or stroke and totally mess up your drawing. Um, it, granted that it does take a lot longer doing it that way. Uh, there's artists out there that certainly can go straight to ink, not have to do a sketch prior to doing it. And those artists, they, they're ink artists. They, they, they deal with comics, they deal with cartoons, and they do it day in, day out. So that those those artists, um, that's that's the, what their primary focus is. And, and that's cool. That's that's fine. That's good. Um, they're brilliant. And no, no doubt, it's definitely a skill to learn. And to to grasp, but I would like to eventually get to that stage when it, with ink anyway. Uh, but at this stage, I still need to put down my uh, sketch beforehand. One of the main things I actually used in this this project was um, I did a simple liner, and then I also went over it and then put in color via ink tents. It's still learning as I went because I've only used it once, and, I'm, and that I was using ink tent pencils primarily, and I was using that to putting that that down on the paper, and it. It, it worked, but it, it also created this grainy texture, which is not how I wanted to it to look. I wanted to make it somewhat realistic. They, they do have their limits, and I'm still discovering what they are. And, and actually, I've got this video in real time, which I will end up using later on after Inktober, probably after Inktober's finished, maybe even sooner, who knows, where I'll do a more in-depth review of what I think of Inktense uh, blocks and pencils. So yeah, right with the intense, it's, it's quite cool. Uh, the colours I back tried to go with the original Pinocchio colours used in the movie, as much as I could with the intense blocks and pencils that I had anyway. So I, I did actually create a few various colours by mixing them together, and I will go further into detail with that, hopefully with a review further on down the track. Thanks guys for taking the time to listen to me and watch my video, it's been great. So be sure to, to give me a thumbs up if you liked or subscribe button if you want to see more. And even leave a comment if you want to, let me know, let me know how I can improve.